Which you guys, a while ago I made a video on how to uh, change your motherboard without reinstalling Windows. Now a lot of people have messaged me and said that how would you do that if the motherboard is dead? So in this video that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how you can change your motherboard uh, when the motherboard has died or gone bad and you need to put a new motherboard in and you still don't want to reinstall Windows it's still possible now there's loads of different ways of going about this now there is some software that you can use like Universal Restore uh, from Acronis or Paragon's tool which is what we're going to use uh, from Paragon software uh, which is basically going to allow us to uh, put in new drivers for our uh, motherboard okay without actually wiping the system so anyway, so what we're going to do here is you can choose whichever way you want to do it. Now obviously there is sysprep and stuff like that that you can use as well. But obviously that needs to be in place because now the motherboard is dead. So the good thing about using this type of software is that you can uh, load, boot up to that CD and then change out your drivers the way you want to, okay, or add new ones in. Anyway, so let's get started. So first thing you want to do is to insert your new motherboard into your uh, desktop machine. Inside your motherboard box you will have your driver CD and your user manual and also your IO shield. This is going to be important when you swap out your motherboard. You'll have all your connections in there as well for your hard drives and stuff. You can use your old ones if you wish but here is the motherboard and uh, once you've got this out of the box you can then start to think about installing it into your case. Now once you have got that installed into your case just like so Make sure you've got your I.O. shield in and everything else and then you can then start thinking about booting up to this and reinstalling all the latest drivers for this particular type of motherboard. Okay, Okay. so what we're going to do here is boot to our uh, CD or USB flash drive. And as you can see this is geared up for Windows 7. Uh, but if you're going to be doing this on Windows 8, you will need to get a more up-to-date software. And we're using uh, Paragon uh, software here. And you can see this is Paragon Advanced Recovery CD. So I'm going to click Accept here to the license agreement. And again here, you can see we've got a couple of options open. Adjust Operating System. This is the one that's going to allow us to adjust our operating system and add in our drivers okay so we're going to click on that one now we're on a virtual box here but I'll just give you uh, an idea of what you need to do you can click next here and you can see the operating system is being shown up here and this is our operating system that we're gonna inject our new um, drivers into okay so we're gonna go next here now again you've got two options here you've got the adjust operating system uh, to the new hardware automatically and what this is going to do is perform a scan of your system and it will automatically f detect uh, the new hardware that you've uh, got there and then you can inject all the new drivers so what you do is you run a scan and then you'd get to this stage here right and you can see where it says uh, yes apply the changes physically so you can uh, do this if you wish and then go next and it will start to um, scan the system and run a scan on that system and, and adjust the operating system to the new hardware that you've just put in okay and that means uh, that everything uh, all the drivers that you've got on there will then be detected and then that will uh, inject them into there okay now if you don't want to do it that way I'll show you another way you can do it as well go next we're going to select the operating system here and we're going to leave the top one and go to uh, set parameters for the operating system adjustment right you can click on here and you can see here now this is more of a manual way you can add a folder to the driver source list now depending on whether you've got um, an actual uh, drive a driver uh, package uh, like a driver pack or something like that or whether you've got the actual CD you can click on this and this will allow you to add those in now whether you're doing this on the uh, you can see here disk drives whether you're doing this from a CD-ROM which comes with all the motherboard manufacturers uh, every single motherboard manufacturer will give you a CD inside the box you can then place, place that into the into the drive there and then add those in you can see here that you can see it here is on E drive okay now obviously you can do this across the network as well and you can add those drivers in across the network if you've got a map network drive or something like that um, but here 
if you look on the top here there's three little icons it's just uh, finding out uh, on the drive there so when you click on the disk drives you can see here you've got a couple of little uh, folders here create a folder delete a folder or file and you can map a network drive okay so for argument's sake if you're going to do a cd-rom drive you'd click on that and you can see now it's selected that uh, drive there for the cd-rom with the driver disk you can then inject all necessary drivers from the provided driver repos uh, repository which will be from the uh, cd-rom okay it's going to apl apply them from there you can click on that and then go next it will scan uh, the drive uh, that CD-ROM drive and then put all the drivers on now you can keep the latest driver versions if you wish uh, but we'll just go next here and I'll show you the next step now here this is where it will change for you you, you will have some um, icons here lit up but because we're on a virtual machine we're not getting that there okay so you can see here add a driver manually so if it's not worked you can always add in a driver manually and point to that location so if you've got a folder um, with all the drivers on it okay you can point to that INF file and uh, then once you've done that that will then inject uh, that driver into the system okay you can see here select it's asking you to select that location for where that INF file is another one here as well you can remove the selective uh, device from the uh, installation list and you can only show devices without drivers or show all devices as well now these will be lit up as well uh, but they're not because we're on a virtual machine again show already available hardware again this is another useful area where you can uh, see what's already on there okay and basically uh, this is already installed um, on here and you can right click on this and you'll see it says what's this so basically once you do that um, you can apply the changes once you've done uh, what you need to do here with your drivers okay once you've injected those into the the operating system and basically that's that's it in a nutshell once you've done that um, you can click on yes apply the changes and then that will uh, finish off the changes and inject those into your new uh, build all you need to do then is uh, shut down a system and then reboot the system and you should boot back up without any blue screens or any problems whatsoever so once you reboot your system back up to the desktop you should then get to the desktop because you'll have all the latest drivers on there okay and that's what you'll see once you get to the desktop you should be back up and running okay and it's as simple as that now if you still have any drivers that you want to remove once you get to the desktop again you can go through uh, this method of going into uh, uninstall a program and remove any drivers that you don't want with old drivers and stuff like that okay from there and you can also go into device manager and remove any old ones that you wish from there as well okay and once you get into device manager here you would then remove anything that you don't need anymore okay and from the old system if there's anything left okay it's as simple as that Anyway, this is just one method of doing that. Uh, there's plenty of other ways of doing this. And hopefully uh, when I get a machine in that's got an old board in it, I'll try and make a video and show you it in real action. Okay. So anyway, I hope this one helps you out. My name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. If you enjoy these videos, guys, then hit the like button. Also hit the subscribe button if you want to keep up to date when I upload new videos. Now, if you've got any problems with your computers or any questions or anything like that or any uh, queries, then you can always head over to my forums and post on there and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. There's plenty of other guys on there that help out also with computer problems as well. Okay, so anyway, have a great weekend guys and I shall see you again in the next video. Bye for now.